as the 2015 Texas legislature grappled with policy decisions on guns, same-sex marriage, education, and life. The Texas Tribune sat down with roughly two dozen legislators to discuss how their personal theology factors into their lawmaking. Everyone in Texas is made in the image of God. And because everyone is made in the image of God, that is serious business. Uh, it's, it's almost like representing God. And who would want to uh, blow that uh, opportunity? In my view, it requires a special kind of self-righteousness to say that my decisions are better made because of my prayer or my relationship with God. I think that's a false debate, a false, and, and unfortunately one that we find ourselves in more commonly today than I think we used to. God weighed heavily in the deliberations of the 2015 Texas legislature, more so than many could remember in past sessions. For me, nothing is more fundamental than our biblical teachings. But I don't remember in the Sunday school lessons or in my scriptures, that God spoke, obviously, to weapons or concealed weapon holders. So the Lord gave us all those rights together. The definition of marriage has been for thousands of years between one man and one woman, created in the image of God. I'm not as concerned about being on the wrong side of history as I am being on the wrong side of what I believe. An influx of Tea Party-backed lawmakers fortified the most conservative strains in the Republican-dominated chambers. A lot of times I look at it as a fight for limited government, bringing government down so that God can be bigger, that there's more of a role for church uh, and for the people to have their ministries. This session did have a different feel. And again, it goes back to what I, uh, I've said a couple of times now, and that is that it was used more as a tool more as a weapon to try to pass or kill public policy. It's, it's pretty clear to me that most people, not all, but most people in America, and surely in Texas, here in the Bible Belt, at some level believe in God. Most Texans do say they believe in God. 77% of the faithful are Christians. 4% affiliate with other beliefs, including Judaism and Islam. Millions, however, do not practice any faith. The study showed that roughly one in five Texans is a non-believer. The legislature reflects those in the majority. All but four of the lawmakers who responded to a Texas Tribune inquiry self-identified as Catholic or some other Christian affiliation. During the last legislative session, religion infused heated debates on gun control, gay marriage, and abortion issues that consumed much of lawmakers' time. That's despite the fact that just 3% of Texans consider them the most important issues facing the state. Throughout the session, the God invoked by lawmakers was almost exclusively a Christian God. The entire basis of Christianity is based on a single event in history, and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is a historical event. If, if it didn't happen, then our faith is in vain. Every other uh, religious philosophy is based on uh, a, a philosophy, not, not occurrences in history. I believe that because of that, Christianity has more validity. So when I say God, I'm speaking of uh, the creator of the universe, the God of the Bible, the God who's revealed in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, I know different people have different conceptions of God, and again, they're free to do that. And we don't hate folks that believe differently than we do. We respect their right to believe those things. But when I talk about God, I'm talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Despite what anyone would want to say in the media or, or anyone in the outside world to try to spin for their own purposes, we are still a Christian nation. And there are some people that want us to deny that. Other lawmakers, however, found the notion of manifest Christianity inappropriate for the government of a diverse state. If that's what gets them... Um to sleep easily at night, that's, that's their deal. You know, my district, uh, House District 50, is, uh, is very diverse. There's a, a significant Muslim population there. Um, there's a significant Asian population there of different faiths within that Asian community. And there's a significant number of people who have no faith. 
Um, so ultimately, I have to be respectful of, of those differences, even more so than the differences that are on the floor of the House. Behind lawmakers' decidedly Christian perspective were differing beliefs on where the line between church and state falls. Well, I too believe in the separation of church and state, but I do not believe in the separation of God and country. And um, the, the separation of church and state is often misinterpreted. It's meant to protect the church. Um, it's meant to protect the church from intrusion by the state, not the other way around. There's a place for government. I'm not an anarchist, but it's a small place. We need to increase and enlarge self-government, family government, parental government, and charity. Um, churches uh, should do, be doing so much more of what the uh, government's doing today. If those institutions, and in particular if individuals, would use their freedom responsibly, I think we would have much less government. The way we get things done here is, is not by reading the Bible, it's by reading the rules of the floor of the House of Representatives. It's the process and the procedures, it's the committees, it's the hearings. All of this is not of God. All of this is man-made institution that's designed to do good things. For me, it's, this, is a, this is a secular environment that we're in. We're not at church. We're in the Texas State Capitol trying to do good things. I do believe that the right to self-defense, the right to defend myself, protect my life and the life of my family um, is a God-given right. God creates life. I do believe we have the right to defend that. Really one of the foundational principles that this country was founded upon is that government doesn't give us our rights, God does. Lawmaking in God's name. Nowhere was it more pronounced during the 2015 legislative session than in the debate over expanding Texans' gun rights. Republicans wanted open carry of handguns and concealed weapons on college campuses. Democrats argued the bills, championed mostly by Tea Party devotees, did not reflect the electorate. The polls show that people of Texas don't want this bill. Administrators don't want this bill. Faculty doesn't want this bill. Workers, employees don't want this bill. Students don't want this bill. Sheriffs don't want this bill. Universities don't want this bill. Why are we doing this? In early 2015, polls showed 72% of Texans believed state gun control laws should remain the same or be more strict. Just 3% of Texans believed gun control was the most important issue facing the state. By contrast, a majority of self-identified Tea Party backers, 54%, believed gun laws should be loosened or done away with entirely. At the legislature, those supporters argued that God was on their side. Is if 99% of the people want to disarm me, um, they, they don't have that right because uh, I have a God-given right. It's protected by the Constitution and it should not be infringed upon. Is carrying a gun for self-defense a God-given right? To the frustration of opponents, that question became central to the legislative debate. I've heard this so many, so many times that open carry and guns, it's God's given right. And some of us would shake our heads and go, what does that mean? That you believe it's a God-given right to arm yourself and defend yourself. Is that not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but help me, is that the premise, the declaration part of your says legislation. We are, we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. That um, that we are endowed with certain inalienable rights, and that to protect these rights, governments are instituted among men to preserve them. Article Seven of the United States Constitution brings forward the Declaration as original law. Therefore, Creator and God are the same to me. Supporters argue that since guns are a method of defending one's life, by extension, gun rights derive from God. The Second Amendment is just an expression of our God-given duty to, to take care of our, of our families. But it's bigger than that. It's the, it's the right to exist. It's the right to life. It's the right to defend myself and be secure in, in myself. I do think that's a, a God-given right. It goes back to that principle that you do have a right to defend yourself. That right is not given to you by the government. It's given to you by God, and it should be protected by the government. Whether or not they supported expanding gun rights, some lawmakers found the God argument unconvincing. I don't know if I were to 
rewind 2,000 years and, and talk to Jesus and say, uh, what do you think? You think guns is, is a God-given right? I, I think he, he preached peace for the most part. Don't get the word of God confused with um, other political documents over the years. Obviously, I, very, I believe in the Second Amendment, and I, and I do think the right to defend yourself uh, is guaranteed in the Constitution. The question turned not just on how lawmakers view government, but on how they view God. Faith can lead you to believe God will protect you. There comes a point in time when I think you implement reasonable policies, and then you have to believe that the God that you serve, the God that created you, is the same God that will protect you. I believe that. Faith can also lead you to believe God gave us guns to protect ourselves. We really cease to be human beings. We become subhuman when we become enslaved or intimidated, and we don't act freely based upon a good conscience. And so there is a way we can preserve that, and it is with means like guns to deliver us from thieves or rapists or murderers. In the end, the latter argument won out. The open carry and campus carry gun bills found their place in Texas law books. When legislating matters of life and death, most Texas lawmakers cite religious faith as the bedrock of their positions. It's real simple. When you're in the womb, you're innocent. I believe any society that does not respect life is destined for failure. God creates life. He means for us to sustain it until natural death. You see a lot of the importance that, that Scripture places on that, that unborn child is already a creation of God. Abortion again became a flashpoint during the 2015 legislative session as lawmakers debated a measure making it harder for minors, including young victims of rape, incest, abuse, or human trafficking, to obtain court permission for an abortion without parental consent. These are young people who have found themselves in this horrible situation, horrible situation, and they're having to navigate this system with the trauma that they're carrying around. I mean, I don't know that any of us in here can imagine what that must be like. You've been victimized, you have been raped, you may have been raped by your father, and you're gonna have to go find your way through a court system and give clear and convincing evidence to someone that you have been raped by your father? I believe that uh, God does not make mistakes, for instance, so whether that's a child with special needs or regardless of their skin color or the circumstances in which they were born, uh, the Lord perfectly designed them um, and, and values that life. But to end a life because you're not ready for it or it's an unwanted pregnancy for any reason is not a reason to kill a baby. So-called judicial bypass abortions are relatively rare in Texas. Roughly 2,200 of the almost 64,000 abortions performed in Texas in 2013 involved women under the age of 18. The state does not track how many of those women sought a judge's approval for the procedure. House Bill 3994, which passed in the 84th legislature, raises the burden of proof for teens seeking a bypass. It limits what courts they can approach and gives judges more time to consider requests. Backers said the changes would weed out teens using courts to hide pregnancies from their parents. I mean, they're just, they're just a few centimeters away from living in the most wonderful land on earth. And maybe they are in tough circumstances, but a tough circumstance in the state of Texas is a far better circumstance than many, many places in the world. Opponents said the bill was meant to drive down the number of abortions, no matter how tragic the circumstances. I enjoy the, the, the intellectual and religious and Christian discussion about what should we do to be good Christians and to live up to our faith. I don't think it is appropriate for people to divide Christians on the basis of specific political issues as though they have the absolute answer. The bill's opponents said they'd be more understanding of anti-abortion legislators 
if those lawmakers were equally pro-life in other circumstances. Texas has executed more people than any other state, and the death penalty, they say, is the most glaring example of this inconsistency. You know, that's one of the Ten Commandments, the thou shalt not kill. It's, I, I can't put it any simpler than that in, in context. I, I would hope that um, we could be consistent. As a Catholic, life is life. It doesn't matter, you know, the Council of Bishops says the death penalty is not acceptable for a Catholic. And so you have people who, who are Catholics who claim to be pro-life, yet they're for the death penalty. And I would say that's not consistent. You are not pro-life. I don't know what that is, but it's not pro-life. But GOP lawmakers who oppose abortion say capital punishment is consistent with their interpretation of the Bible. Uh, when you're born, you're innocent. You haven't committed any crimes. Why should you be killed? The death penalty uh, is levied upon people that society has judged by their laws have committed a crime at such a level that they are punished not with just life in prison, but with the death penalty. Um, so there's no comparison. Other lawmakers see a different pro-life contradiction in how meager Texas's services are for poor women trying to raise babies they struggle to afford. When that, that life, that fetus becomes life and, is, is, uh, is, um, and the woman has given birth, then we have an obligation to do everything we can to be what I call pro-life. And that is make sure that that, that child has uh, has the things that he or she will need in order to live a very fruitful and productive life because um, that is our responsibility. That's our obligation. Anticipating that the U.S. Supreme Court would soon legalize same-sex marriage, Republican lawmakers in the 84th legislature worked overtime seeking ways to derail gay marriage in Texas. Seventy-six percent, I believe that was the number of the people in Texas, voted for marriage between a man and a woman. So why should the Supreme Court overrule the people of Texas? In 2005, 18 percent of registered voters turned out for a special election. and overwhelmingly added a same-sex marriage ban to the state constitution. But by 2015, a University of Texas, Texas Tribune poll showed Texans almost evenly split on the issue. Lawmakers with strongly held religious beliefs led the search for a way to forestall gay marriage. I don't look at homosexuality any different than I would an adulterer, a pornographer, those that are caught up in those lifestyles or bondage. We all have our demons to slay, but to be in that lifestyle and say I'm a self-professing Christian with no expectation of turning away, that's a direct violation of the Christian faith. State Senator Charles Perry was among legislators who pushed for a law that would make the Secretary of State the sole issuer of marriage licenses, taking that ability away from counties. It would also have barred the use of state or local funds for a marriage not sanctioned by the state constitution. This is a lifestyle and a choice and a decision rather than an actual right that is granted through our pursuit of happiness. The social conservative effort came after the Travis County clerk issued a same-sex couple a marriage license in February, following a court order. Democrats successfully blocked that bill before it reached the House floor. When someone is introducing anti-gay legislation and you happen to be gay, it's hard not to take it personally. I'm doing the best I can to not um, let these issues be personal. and and respect their view, but I was raised a different way, and my, my Jesus is different. When I see us doing certain things in this capital to keep them from having some basic rights that all of us should have that are more civil in, in nature than they are religious, uh, I, I, I really take that to heart, uh, and it's something that upsets me where I've had to walk off the floor to calm down. Gay marriage opponents had better luck passing the so-called pastor protection bill, a largely symbolic measure stating that pastors and clergy cannot be forced to perform a wedding that violates their religious beliefs. Skeptics wondered why the law was needed at all. Do you know any gay and lesbian individuals? 
Excuse me? Do you know any gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual individuals? Yes, absolutely. Do you know any that plan to get married? Uh, Same sex? Not, not at this moment that I know of. Well, I do. Okay. Would it surprise you to know that they do not want to be married by a clergy that does not embrace their union? Uh, that would be common sense, in my opinion. Absolutely. Well, that's the reason I don't know what you're trying to fix. In late June, when the Supreme Court issued its landmark ruling legalizing same-sex marriage, the state's top lawyer released an opinion telling clerks with religious objections they too could opt out of issuing same-sex couples marriage licenses. But he warned they should be prepared for the legal consequences. Thankfully, the Constitution was written by people of faith. And like I said, they, they, the fundamental underpinnings of it are, are, I think, faith. And this idea that our rights are not granted by the government, they're granted by God. Many lawmakers, even those who believe marriage is defined by God as between one man and one woman, think government should get out of the marital business altogether. The scripture is very clear and the role of, of uh, marriage is not created by government. Marriage is a, is a union that's, that's created by God. And I do believe it's revealed in the scripture that marriage is between one man and one woman, but I also believe it's revealed in nature. And so I don't think it's government's right our responsibility to define marriage, but to recognize it. Governor Greg Abbott rejected Representative Simpson's call for a special legislative session to consider getting Texas out of the marriage business. After initial resistance in a few counties, all Texas clerks began issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples, and the state began aligning other policies, like employee benefits and birth certificates, to conform with the court's decision. Hours into a marathon debate on the state budget, the Texas House reached full boil over a Republican amendment that would have taken money away from HIV and AIDS treatment and moved it into abstinence education. What, what is your goal? My goal is for everybody to be abstinent until they're married. Well, and my goal is for everybody to be walking around AIDS-free, HIV-free, and, and, and to me, that's a goal. Texas has spent millions teaching its youth that abstinence is the best method of birth control and STD prevention. It continues to record the nation's third highest rate of teen pregnancy and third highest rate of new HIV diagnoses. Ramping up abstinence programs was just one education priority for religious conservatives and Tea Party lawmakers. Sex education does not belong in school. Reading, writing, arithmetic our computer system, languages, critical thinking needs to be in education, not sex education. If you're going to talk about sex and marriage and intercourse, it should, it's best done with one's parents and uh, the privacy of one's home, not when your hormones are really growling and moving in, in a classroom. I remember that when I was in the seventh grade and you know that's just so unnatural. You want to cut down on the number of unwanted pregnancies? Well you need to talk about preventative measures up front and turning a blind eye to that is I think a mistake. Kids are a lot more mature than every generation before them and they're able to have these conversations if we can do it in a productive manner. The disagreement produced one of the most remarkable and uncomfortable moments many can remember on the floor. Were, were you taught abstinence? Yes, I was. And did it work? It did. I was a virgin the day I got married at age 29. Okay. I've had sex with one woman in my life, and that's my wife. And I would hope that for other people. Thank you for asking. So you believe that what was good for you is good for everybody else? I believe what's good for me is good for a lot of people. The abstinence money was initially approved overwhelmingly by Republicans, but dropped in later budget negotiations. A faction of conservatives also fought the governor's push to upgrade pre-kindergarten programs in public schools. Government cannot keep taking responsibility where parents should have the responsibility for their children, especially at that age. I think what we should be shooting for is for parents teaching their children and raising them up, uh, and not some third party. Some advisors to Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick stirred the pot by circulating a letter calling pre-K itself godless. I don't control what everyone who supports me or works with me says, 
So um, that was uh, the advisory board's decision to write that. We weren't aware of it, and uh, I would I would disagree um, with uh, some of what was said. I do understand what some people believe, and look, how, how can you uh, disagree that we've taken God out of school? You can't, because we have. The governor's pre-K legislation, which did not expand programs but added new standards and yardsticks, passed with support from Democrats. These are our children. Uh, we're blessed to have them. Uh, the good Lord has made us stewards of these kids. We owe it to these children to equip them with everything they need in order that they can live out their life and reach their God-given potential. Conservative lawmakers also pushed legislation that would have allowed businesses to reduce their taxes by contributing to private school scholarship funds so parents could move their children out of failing public schools, including into private religious schools. Similar so-called school choice proposals, often involving vouchers, have long divided lawmakers and failed to pass this session. From a faith-based point, I just think that if we steal the opportunity for a child to get an education, we steal the opportunity for them to live the American dream. Um, and my faith tells me that's just not right.